Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Friday, May 6, 2016, and on today's podcast, we are going to discuss the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico with particular emphasis on its debt problems and what, if anything, the United States should do about them. That's a question I get fairly often. What would you do about Puerto Rico first? A little background. The island of Puerto Rico was claimed in 1493 by Columbus, Christopher Columbus, for the kingdom of Spain for four centuries. Four hundred years, the Spanish fought off invasion attempts by the French, the Dutch, and the British. The Spanish Empire introduced the Spanish language along with Roman Catholicism to the Puerto Ricans. Following the Spanish-American War in 1898, Spain ceded the island to the United States. As part of the peace treaty ending that war, Puerto Ricans are considered to be natural-born citizens of the United States, but the island does not have a vote in Congress, which governs the territory under the Puerto Rico Federal Relations Act of 1950. As a U.S. territory, Citizens residing on Puerto Rico are disenfranchised at the federal level and have no vote for president or vice president, but they have a Congress-approved local constitution that allows them to elect their own governor. They do have a vote, of course, when they reside in the United States, as many of them do. The current governor is Mr. Alejandro Garcia Padilla, and he has some very difficult problems to deal with, some very difficult days ahead for him. And that is really the beginning of our story. In essence, the story is simple. Puerto Rico has massive debt that it cannot pay. And you know what they say about debt that cannot be paid, folks. It won't be paid. Stories are rarely that simple, though. And this one is no exception. Puerto Rico's debt problems have been building for some time. It has been obvious for many years that a crisis would arrive someday. Last Monday, May 2nd, the island's Government Development Bank, GDP it's known as, decided not to pay most of the $422 million that was due that day. The bank made only a $23 million interest payment and left the balance of $399 million unpaid, thus firing the first shot in what will likely be a long war. This war, this struggle, involves the Puerto Rican government. The Government Development Bank, the citizens of Puerto Rico and their need for essential services. The bondholders of Puerto Rico are creditors, if you will, the United States Congress, and finally, the American taxpayer. According to the International Monetary Fund, the problems are deeply systemic. Virtually nothing has been done to solve them. Quote, Puerto Rico faces hard times, structural problems, economic shock, weak finances, have yielded a decade of stagnation, out-migration, and debt. Financial markets once looked past these realities, but have since cut off the Commonwealth from normal market access. A crisis looms, end quote. Let's try to analyze some of the key points of what the IMF said, a decade of stagnation. That means little or no economic growth is taking place, which makes it hard to raise tax revenue to cover the debt. The island's primary product, tourism, has been hurt by economic problems in the U.S. and elsewhere during the last 10 years. Out-migration, well, that just means people have been leaving, leaving Puerto Rico en masse to escape its poverty and to find a living somewhere else. This means a collapsing tax base resulting in the next problem, debt, the island. Like most U.S. cities and most U.S. states, even like the federal government, has been selling debt for many years to cover the promises that cannot be covered by revenue. These promises are covered only temporarily, however. Too many government obligations, such as promises to care for government employees, provide salaries or pensions for life, etc., not enough revenue coming in to fund them for a while and through a few political administrations, The obligations can be met through selling debt, and then, even that won't work. The debt can't be paid, not even the interest. Puerto Rico currently carries an estimated $70 billion in total debt, and besides the recent default on the $399 million, it has $2 billion more due this summer. None of that debt can be repaid on time, so some type of restructure 
would seem to be in order. Why not advise the Puerto Rican government to put the island's finances into Chapter 9 bankruptcy so that the entire pension, health care, uh, and other obligations could be restructured to meet the realities of today? That is what Detroit did a few years ago. A well-respected bankruptcy judge named Stephen Rhodes from the bankruptcy court in Detroit was put in charge of the Detroit bankruptcy with broad powers to call on those he needed to solve the problem. I knew Judge Rhodes quite well from my years in Detroit. And when I heard that he had accepted the assignment, I was certain that Detroit would emerge from bankruptcy intact. Why not allow Puerto Rico to do the same thing? Because in the mid-1980s, Congress denied by legislation any right of the island to seek Chapter 9 protection. And the First Circuit Court of Appeals struck down earlier attempts by the island to override that law through a reform act. There are calls in Congress to rescind the act retroactively, but that is not without problems as well. The Congressional Act denying the right of bankruptcy protection to Puerto Rico was specifically used as an inducement for investors to buy Puerto Rican debt to help it through the last crisis. They relied on that promise, in other words. They may have relied on it, but risk was priced into the bonds they bought. These bonds were sold at far above normal market rates, about 8%. That was part of the deal. Higher rates for greater risk. If something isn't done about this debt and it simply goes unpaid, the citizens of Puerto Rico could lose their utility service, their health care, basic services like that, sewer and garbage service, doing nothing, is one extreme, and a complete bailout by U.S. Taxpayers would be another extreme. To me, neither option is acceptable. I would not accept a taxpayer bailout under any circumstances. And cutting the people off with no service is not acceptable either when there is an alternative. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan is supposedly preparing a bill for the House to consider next week that will, in essence, require Congress to take over the finances of Puerto Rico and essentially act as a de facto bankruptcy court, at least that is the rumor. We will hopefully know what the bill says next week, but if Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi are behind it, which they are, it will probably be complicated, expensive, and, of course, doomed to failure. The whole thing smacks of colonialism to me, folks. Puerto Rico is facing an unmanageable debt crisis from which it is allowed no relief. It cannot appeal to the World Bank or the IMF because it is not an independent country and it cannot seek protection in U.S. bankruptcy court because of U.S. legislation as usual. The answer is far simpler than it first seems. Rescind the anti-bankruptcy law retroactively. That's what I say. The bondholders will take a large haircut, but they will, under the Ryan Pelosi bill as well, appoint a good bankruptcy judge to oversee the process. He can see this through, as Stephen Rhodes did in Detroit. In fact, Judge Rose would be a fine choice, although I don't know if he is fluent in Spanish or not. The bondholders will object, of course. They will appeal, but the bankruptcy court can decide that. Ultimately, I think the bondholders would lose in federal court. Everybody wins, and everybody loses at the same time. All the people entitled to pensions, health care, etc., relied on the system as well as the bondholders, just as they did in Detroit when the alternative is nothing. Perhaps something is better than that. At least that's the way I see it, folks. Till next time, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.